In this tutorial, we're going to run through the process to create a spindle using a CNC machine with a rotary axis. We're going to take a look at creating a component using the two rail sweep modeling function to create this basic shape. And we're going to look at having some vectors to help uh, fuel our tool pathing in another video as well. So let's have a look at actually setting up our spindle shape to begin with. And then in subsequent videos, we'll go over tool pathing and the final result as well. So for this video to actually create this shape, let's go up to file and new. So to set up our new job, we need to look at what type of job we need. Now, in this case, we need a rotary job and I'm going to be working with inches as my units. I want this to be 26 inches in length and I want the diameter of my job to be four inches. Now for the Z0 position, we can use a cylinder surface here as indicated by this red line, or we can use a cylinder axis. Now in this case, I'm going to use a cylinder axis. And this is similar to using the machine bed option in a standard three axis job. Now the reason I'm using this is for accuracy, because if I use a cylinder surface, I'm effectively stating that the cylinder surface is perfect all the way around, so a perfect circle. But I don't actually know that that is the case for my current material. So to circumvent that, I'm going to go for the cylinder axis, which will mean it will use the center of my material here to then machine to. So it should result in a much more accurate cut. The XY dating position is the bottom left. And for my orientation, in my case, it's going to be along the X axis. So that means it's going to cut along the x-axis which means all the y moves will be wrapped and if it was the y-axis that would mean the job is you can see here standing vertically so all the x moves would be wrapped so in this case mine is the x-axis for the demonstration but if you're not sure in your case you can always have a look at your cnc machine to see which way your rotary is set up or you can indeed ask your machine manufacturer and for my modeling resolution, I'm going to go for very high and then I can click OK. And now that my job's set up, we should go over what is actually happening here in the software. Now you'll notice that when I turn on this option here, I've got the uh, flat three axis job. So it's important to note that in Aspire, all of the jobs will be treated as a three axis job. And the rotary part of this actually occurs when you save out your job with a rotary specific post processor. So in this case, I would save my job out with a post processor that wraps all of my Y moves into A moves. And that would mean all of the Y moves will be wrapped around so that this can be cut along X. So just one thing to keep a note is that the, when you're designing in the software, it will be done in a three axis job, as you can see here. So a flat job. And then the wrapping actually occurs when you uh, save out your file as the G code with the correct post processor for your particular CNC machine and it will wrap those moves to create a rotary job. Now you can also see here in the 3D view we've actually got a, a wireframe that you can see here for the cylinder. So you can see that it's represented here and you can also see some of the information for this if you follow my mouse to the bottom left and you can see the width, the height and the depth here of this job. But I'm just going to toggle off the uh, rounded view here. I'm going to go back to the uh, flat view so we can look at now uh, approaching our layers because when you set up a rotary job in the software, there will be some layers created automatically for you to uh, take advantage of. So you, we have the zero plane layer. We have layer one, which is our active worksheet here. We have two rail sweep rails. So these are the vectors on the left and right here. If, in fact, if I double left mouse click this page icon, they will select the vectors here. So those we can take advantage of in just a moment to create a two rail sweep. And then finally, if I turn on this layer as well, we have the bounding box. And that is the uh, bounding box around the material here that we can take advantage of as well. But in this design, we don't actually need it. So what I'm going to do is click on this icon here and then go to delete, delete this. And in this case, I don't want the data anymore. I want to get rid of that vector. So delete data, click OK, and that's now gone. Okay, so now we're going to start by importing a vector from a different file, and this vector represents the basic profile for the shape that we're going to wrap. So if you follow my mouse pointer over to the left here, I'm going to click on this icon here to import bitmap or vector. I'm going to choose this rotary EPS file. Now you notice on my worksheet, I now have the profile that I'm going to wrap. 
Now, I actually drew this earlier and exported it from the software. And it's important to note that when you are creating a wrapped part, your first job is to sketch out the shape of the profile that you want. And so now that we've already done that, I'm just going to actually move this off the worksheet so we can see what we're uh, working with. So I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit. And using the down arrow on the keyboard while the vector is selected, I'm just going to nudge that down just off the worksheet just a little bit. And I'm also now going to have a look at creating some components using uh, this vector and the vectors we've got on screen here. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to clean up my layers just a little bit. So if we follow my left uh, or my mouse pointer over to the left here, click on the layers tab and you notice we've got several layers here and these could do with a little bit of cleaning up. So the first one we have is a zero plane. Now the zero plane is automatically created in the rotary job when you create a rotary job, but we don't need it in this case. So we can left mouse click on this icon to the right of it and we're going to delete, delete this and delete the data as we did earlier with the layer that we didn't need earlier. So that's now got rid of the zero plane. You can see visually it's represented that on our worksheet. Now layer one is our active layer and any components I create will be on this layer. So any grayscale components will be on this layer. So I'm going to make it more obvious as to what this layer is. So I'm going to left mouse click on this icon again, choose rename, and we're going to call this one components. So nice and clear as to what this layer's functionality is for. Now, as it's at the top of the hierarchy of the layers list here, that means that any vectors we create will be on top of it. So they won't be obscured by this layer as it's currently at the top of this list. So any vectors we now create subsequently will be on top of this layer. Now we've got our two rail sweeps, that's absolutely fine, but the import uh, could do with renaming here. So that's our profile down here. So I'm just going to left mouse click on the icon here, rename, and I'm just gonna call this one rotary uh, profile and hit enter on the keyboard and that is my layers set up now for me to utilize. So with that in mind let's have a look at creating the component for our spindle. So first things first let's make the components layer our active layer. So this is the layer we want to work with currently. We're going to go back to the design tab and we're going to hover our mouse down to this tool just here under the modeling tools called create a shape by sweeping between two rails. Uh, vectors. So I'm just going to left mouse click on that. Now the first thing we see is we need some drive rails. So we have our drive rails just here. If you notice from earlier from our layers tab, we have the two rail sweep rails. So I'm just going to left mouse click on the left one, hold shift, hover over to the right, left mouse click the second one, click on use selection, and now I've got my drive rails. So if I turn my views here, you can see this clearly in both the uh, 2D view and the 3D view, uh, drive rails are ready to go. Now I don't need to scale across the width, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. I'm not gonna sweep between the spans, so I'll uncheck that. I'm not gonna to scale to an exact height either, but I will rename this to main uh, component or main profile. But I will actually have to select the vector in turn to use as the cross section, and that's where our profile vector here comes in. So if I click on that, that will now be used to drive across this shape here. And we'll see that when we hit apply. And you'll notice the software does some calculations and there is our flat version of uh, our model. And if I click this icon here, you will see we now have, if I maximize the uh, 3D view, our spindle. So just as easy as that, we were able to create our spindle uh, in the software nice and easy using those vectors. And you can see how powerful it is having those vectors pre-prepared uh, to make this as easy as possible for you. Now at this stage, you could apply some uh, 3D roughing and finishing toolpaths to this tool, but we're gonna look at some efficient uh, machining here for some of the parts that are actually flat. So you can see I've got some flat parts here, for example, that I could utilize some uh, 2D machining to actually take advantage of. So to do that, let's just go back to tiling our views at the moment. And we're going to uncheck this option here to make this flat and I'm just going to close out of this form because what we're going to do is actually utilize some boundary vectors to help us with our uh, 2D machining or our efficient machining in some of these flat areas. So to do that let's first pop over to our 2D view. I'm just going to maximize the window for now. I'm just going to zoom to our drawing limits and what we're actually going to do is look at some of these flat areas here. So you can see this nice flat gray area here and you can see it corresponds to this dip here in the profile. Then we're gonna move over to this flat section over here. 
And then we're also going to use this flat section just at the end here as well. Now to do that, let's make uh, a new layer that we're going to put these uh, boundaries onto. So let's add a new layer. And we're going to call this one 2D Pockets. And we're going to make this our active layer. So what we're now going to do is go over to the draw rectangle tool on the left here under create vectors, left mouse click. And I'm actually going to use my snap options. So if you follow my mouse pointer over to the top right here, you'll see it says toggle geometry uh, snapping on and off, and we've got smart snapping on and off. Now this is going to help us to uh, get more accurate drawing here, because what I'm going to do is hover my mouse down here into this section here onto this corner. You'll notice my mouse pointer snaps that corner. So that wakes up that point, and you can see I've got that guideline now to help me to orientate my mouse pointer. I can left mouse click onto that area because I know it's now in line with this bottom profile. And then I'm going to wake up the point on the opposite side here. And now that's woken up, I can just drag up my rectangle up to the top here, let go. And that is the first of my flat areas. And I'll do the same over here. So drag up from this point without clicking yet. So I've woken up that point and you can notice it's now snapped to here. I can left mouse click while holding that. I can snap to this point here. So that wakes it up over to here. So I can drag that up in line now. And you can see I can let that go. And it is now accurate to this area because I've used the profile to my advantage here to draw my rectangle. We'll do the same for the final area just over here. So I'll wake up that point by hovering over it, left mouse click, when we get to the top, so we'll follow the line. So left mouse click here, hold it, and then we'll come back to this area here. You can see my mouse pointer has snapped to that corner and we'll drag it up and we'll drag the rectangle all the way to the top here. And so it snaps into place. There we go. You can see the guideline indicating that we're in the right location there. Let go. And that's all of our 2D uh, rectangles. But we will actually need a, another set for the 3D areas as well, because what we want to efficiently machine these areas for the 2D pockets. We also want to have a look at doing the 3D um, areas as well, and we can use a boundary for those too. So what we'll do is we'll close the form for now, go back up to the Layers tab at the top here, add in a new layer, and we're going to call this one 3D Boundary. And we're actually going to organize our layers a little bit here again. I'm going to change the color so they stand out nice and clearly on my worksheet. So for the 2D pockets, I'm going to click this black box to the left of it, change that one to orange. For the 3D boundary, I'm going to change it to green. So anything I now draw will be in green. And that is our active layer. You can see it's in bold here. That is indicating our active layer. Again, hover over to the left-hand side, go to the draw rectangle tool. And we're simply going to go from this point in the corner here that we can utilize our other rectangle here as our snap point. We're going to drag that all the way up and out to this other rectangle, let go. So that's our first of our 3D uh, boundaries. And we'll do the same on this side. So to the bottom right of this rectangle here for our 2D pocket and to the top right here, let go. And that is now our second 3D boundary. We can close up the rectangle tool. And if I click on the page here, we now have our boundary separations. Now there's one final piece of setup we need to do here, which is to extend our vectors for the 2D pockets. And the reason we want to do that is because when we're machining the 2D pockets, we don't want the tool to go up to the edge and then stop and then potentially create a seam when this job wraps around. Unlike a 3D toolpath where the center line of the tool will be cutting up to the edge or cutting on the edge here, the 2D uh, pocket will actually go up to the edge rather than over it. So what we're going to do is extend the vectors to circumvent that. So what we can do is go up to the Layers tab or double left mouse click on the page icon next to 2D Pockets. So that makes it the active layer. And it also selects all the vectors. Now this is important because we can now change the size of all of these at once. If you follow my left or follow my mouse pointer over to the left here, we're going to go over to this tool here, which is Set Selected Object Size or T on the keyboard there. And we're going to change just the height. So to do that, we're going to uncheck this option here for link X, Y, because we only want to change the Y value. And if we had this linked, both values will change. So let's uncheck that. And we're going to increase this to 13. So we're going to enter 1, 3, press enter on the keyboard. And you'll notice that the vectors now extended past the edges here. You can see that nice and clearly, way past the edge here. So that will help, as I mentioned, to 
make sure that the pocket cuts past the edge, doesn't create that seam effect if there was indeed going to be one. And with our uh, 3D boundaries here, we don't need to do one because the center line will be, the tool will be cutting on the center line there as it cuts around. So with that all set up, we now have our rotary spindle. So that is everything done to create our actual spindle itself. And then the next video, we'll have a look at actually creating some tool pathing for it. But to make sure that we don't lose any progress, we're going to save our file. So we'll go up to File, Save As, and we can call this one Rotary Spindle. And we can save out that file. So this is now ready to go for next time. And of course, we will see you in the next video to show you how to make the tool pass for it.